friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Got a completely different kind of project today. One that's going to involve some machining. A wonderful viewer from, I believe, the Netherlands sent me this router base for my Dremel tool. Works wonderfully. It's designed really super well. But there's one little problem. I was using this the other day and I started noticing this thing flopping and, and starting to move. And I went, how did that loosen up? Because, you know, you just tighten them down. Now, I seriously do not think I've ever over tightened these and stripped it out or anything like that because I haven't even used it that much. But anyway, you, you know, you just snug them down like that. This one still holds. This one here doesn't. It just, it, it literally just pulls out, as you can see. You can, you can, it just, it sort of works. And if you look in there, actually the threads don't look like they've been stripped or anything. It just looks like the hole's a little too big and the threads are just a little too big. It, you can't tighten it up anymore. So I'm gonna work on this. I'm gonna see if I can, you know, maybe bore this out bigger, put a brass sleeve in there and rebore the brass sleeve and cut the threads on it to fit this. And you can kind of see there's already brass sleeves in here that he put in here. And that's for the slides to slide on. Brass is pretty good for cutting threads into as well. So I'm thinking about putting a brass sleeve in here, perhaps even a steel sleeve, I don't know. And uh, you know, making the um, sleeve a press fit so that it fits down in there really tight. In other words, make the sleeve actually bigger than the hole and force it into the hole. That's what I'm playing with here in my head. An easier option would just be to get a bigger one of these and put it in there, but but I don't think that's necessarily a really good option either because the next size up is going to be pretty big. Yeah, I think I'm just going to sleeve it and and you know fix it where I don't think I'll ever have any more trouble with it. And I really like these knobs, and I doubt I could get these kinds of knobs in a bigger uh, one anyway. Though you probably could if you look. <laughs> Maybe I just want to do some machining. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm going to fix it one way or the other. And I thought I'd take you along for the ride. So here we go. Actually, the first thing I had to do to get it apart was take my nut off here. I had a retaining nut on here. What's the big deal about that? Well, I had CA glued it on there. When you lift this like this, it keeps it from coming apart. Well, anyway, uh, with that CA glue on there, uh, you can't, you know, you couldn't loosen the nut. So I just took my little torch, heated the nut, and that knocked the CA glue loose uh, really fast. And then you can just turn this. Now it's still hot. That's why I'm turning it awkward here like this. But uh, you know, it can't. It came right off, so no big deal. So now I can take it all apart. This bit here and that bit there is all we really need. I think I'm going to devise a method to uh, machine this on my um, milling machine, I think. I'm a little bit torn on it, I'll be honest, because he has got the mach these threads machined all the way into the brass section. I'm really not sure why this has done what it's done. Like, like you can see, I can just slide it in there. It does not look like it's wore out. It doesn't look like there's any problem. It just looks like it somehow got bigger. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. I'm sure this is probably a metric th thread, and that's not a big deal either. I've got plenty of metric stuff, so I guess we'll go into the uh, dark side of the shop where I've got the machining tools, and let's see what we can come up with. My friends, I'm over here on the dark side. I refer to it that way because everything over here is dirty, greasy. It's just kind of dark and dingy. <laughs> But uh, I found myself a letter K drill, and if you notice on this side, and maybe you can see that, it, uh, it pokes all the way through the hole on that side. That's the loose hole. See how loose it is? On this side, it barely even goes in the hole. So anyway, I'm going to use this letter K drill to drill out a bushing and see if I can thread it. I've turned, determined that it's an M81 millimeter thread. So it's M8 uh, millimeter size with a one millimeter thread. So 
Anyway, I'm going to use this letter K drill to drill the, the, the pilot hole for the tap. So let's get started. Alright, I've got my little bushing chucked up in the lathe over here. Now what these bushings are, they're just some offset that was that came with something I bought 40 years ago. I've just got a, I had a whole bunch of these and I just threw them in a box and every once in a while they come in handy. Well, it's just it so happens that this part of it is just about the right size. So I'm going to try uh, drilling this. This may be hard or something. You know, I don't know. I've not, I don't think I've ever tried drilling one. Uh, it may be a fail. So let's just see if this will drill. And if it will drill, then we should be able to tap it, I would think. So here we go. My first attempt. I have no idea. Well, that part was simple. Now let's see if we can tap it. I don't know yet, but maybe we'll get lucky. Okay, I've got the eight by one tap in this drill chuck. I've got everything floating here, so it just helps keep it straight. So I'm just gonna see if I can draw it in there. I don't know for sure that it will draw in. Does not look like it's grabbing. Let me measure that hole to see if it's the right size. Well, the hole measures at 280 thousandths. I was shooting for 284 thousandths with that K drill, uh, and so we're only four thousandths, the thickness of a hair, smaller. I would think this would get started, but so far, no luck. I may have to actually just put it in the uh, in the vise and, and do it by hand where I can put some pressure on it. I, it's hard to put pressure on it this way. Does not seem to even cut it at all. Hmm. That's very strange. I would have thought this would have worked. Well, I'm going to try another tactic. Off camera, I tried forcing a tap in there. It doesn't seem to work. I've gone to the very next size larger drill, which uh, I drilled it with a K, this is an L, so I'm going to just start uh, the hole a little bit with this L to see if that will help the tap get started. I don't know if it will or not. That didn't do much, it didn't make it much bigger at all, but I can see it made it bigger. Um, let's just see if it made a difference on the tap. By the way, just so you know, I also turned this power button off and this machine cannot be turned on now. Um, so like, you know, if you try to turn it on, it won't turn on until you pull this back out and push this. So my point is that as I'm doing these work by hand, there's no danger of the machine turning on. I've got the tap back in here. I put some oil on the tap. The tap actually goes in the hole a little bit now. Let's see if it'll start threading. Well, nope, it doesn't seem like it. Here's a chamfer tool. I'm gonna to put this in and see if I chamfer the edge, if that will help it. It definitely chamfered it. Let's see if, if that made any difference. You know, it's never easy when I have to do something. It, it could be easy, it just could really be simple, but nope, it usually isn't. Ordinarily, you don't lock these down, but I'm gonna try to force feed it with this thing and see if that'll make a difference. That seems to be working. Since I'm doing it by hand, I don't feel like this is much of a problem, but I wouldn't do this under power for sure. All right, so I'm going to loosen it up and see if I can unthread it now. I can see a little bit of a thread starting in there. You know, honestly, it could be these taps. These are not the best quality taps in the world. I think what I'm going to try now is taking it out of here and putting it in the vise and doing it by hand with the hand tap. I can feel it better and I'll know if I'm going to break something. Uh, this is hard to tell how much pressure I'm putting on anything. I've got it started straight, so 
hopefully the hand tap will work now. It's only started maybe three, two or three threads in, so, but maybe we can go on from there by hand. It, it should be nice if I could get this tap, because this would be the perfect size sleeve for what I need to do. Let's see what happens here. Um, oh, it's really not holding it. Yeah, it's spinning. Um, I don't have a V groove to hold this with. I've got to find something that I can hold this with. My chuck on my lathe would work, but this handle's too big. I could put a smaller handle in. I may end up doing that. I'll back up five and figure it out here. Well, once again, I'm back over here. This holds it better than anything else, so I, you know, the problem is I don't, this is small, it's hard to hold that by hand to keep it from spinning when I'm spinning it with this handle. So, I put the chuck key in here, I've got the chuck key bumped up against this part right here, and I'm holding it by hand to try to keep it from spinning. So, it's just, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Backing up to cut the threads off, and I'm going forwards, trying to... Uh-oh, it's spinning inside of that now again. Man, it's, this is really difficult. I don't know why those threads are cutting so difficult. I'm afraid I'm going to break it off, and I, I don't want to break the tap, but... Honestly, I don't think I've ever broke a tap in my life, but this would be a good candidate because it's a small tap, and this is really seems to be hard. The good side of that is, if I get a thread in this, it ought to last. It shouldn't wear out. <laughs> it's just, it's never easy being me. You might have heard that before. It just seems like it should be simpler than this. Oh my gosh, it's a hard one to cut. I'm assuming this thing is cutting threads. I don't know if it's just wearing out my tap or what the deal is. It's really hard. I really thought that would work better. See if one of these is even starting in there yet. Because if, if it's not, then I'm wasting my time anyway. Yeah, it seems like it's going to go in there. Yeah, it screws in pretty far, so... Uh, yeah, and it's tight, so... We're doing the right thing. Just going to have to do more of it. I'm going to just probably do more of that off camera, because no point sitting here just saw, watching me struggle. But eventually, I'm going to get this all the way through there or break the tap trying. Well, there was one more scenario I didn't think of. And that is I broke the large piece off of the bushing. <laughs> oh, what a shame, what a shame, what a shame, what a shame, what a shame. Well, can you say, let's see if we can start well, giving up on that other material. I'm looking through my bushing drawer and found this. Uh, it looks like it's brass. I don't really know much about it and what the, the strange thing is is it looks like it might be just the right size to tap already. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Let's see what happens. I'll put the tap in the drill here to get it started straight and let's see if we can tap this. I don't know. You never know do you know. Okay let's see if this material will tap and even if it will tap, is it really maybe a little too large for this tap? Uh, the hole, I mean. And it might be. It may not work well enough. But it's worth a try. At least it seems to be cutting right in there, no problem. I, I think the hole's just a little bit too large, but it may work out fine. I don't know. We'll see. Uh-oh. I, uh, yeah, got a problem. It's spinning, and I didn't realize it was spinning. Looks like it's through, so what I'm going to do, I think it's easier for me to back it out by hand. This, this is kind of awkward, so I'm going to get this out of my way. Uh, the bushing has just about worked its way. It just doesn't quit with me. It really doesn't. It's just like anything that can will almost every time. 
the bushing has just about worked its all, way all the way out of the chuck, <laughs> sliding around. So we'll put it back in there again. I'm afraid I'm going to crush it. That's my other problem. Oh my gosh, it just could just be hard. You know, this really could be hard. <laughs> it's just, it's unbelievable the things that I have to go through to do the simplest things. Okay. All right. It does seem like it cut threads and it does seem like it's backing out okay. Will the handle go in here? Will it thread in? Nope. Isn't that weird? I can't explain that. It must be that these taps are bigger than this. That is weird. That's exactly the problem I have with the with the piece now. That slides right through. That's crazy. As hard as that was to tap, and the tap goes on, and that tap is an M81 tap. Look at that. The tap doesn't slide through. The tap slides, threads on just perfectly. What is up with this? Why do I run into these weird things? Look at that. It just slides right over. No problem at all. It just slides right over. Yet, the tap, which is supposed to be the same as that bolt, and the reason I say that is because this tap is marked as an M81. I promise you it is. I can read it on here. M8 by 1. This thread gauge is marked as M81. You put this in here, it fits in perfectly. I mean, it fits in perfectly. No play, it fits perfectly. I just cut the thread with this. You can see this fits in here perfectly. It's marked M81. In fact, it's tight, if anything. But it is perfect. I mean, it threads right in. And yet, when I put this in, it slides through the hole. Yeah, you, you can only be me and have these kinds of problems. I mean, it's just weird. Anybody else, this would just work. Let's see if it fits this. I would say it doesn't, obviously, because something's got to give here. Well, actually, it's a little tight. It would probably cut that out a little large, which is probably why this isn't working. This, this tap has got to be slightly oversized. Now, I just want you to know, I was not the one that cut this thread and this, but the wonderful viewer that sent me this thing probably did cut it with a tap just like this. And just one more test, this bushing that I just cut the threads in, it slides over the M8 pitch gauge also. Just slides right over it. You thread this into this thread gauge, and it starts with no problem at all, but I will admit it's, it gets tight pretty quickly. So my guess is this thing's oversized, and it's going to cut this out bigger if I went on through. How do you get lucky enough to get a defective tap like that? I don't know how you get that lucky, but I got that lucky. Reflecting on the problems I was having tapping this and how tight it was, I cut the right size hole for a normal M8 by one thread. But because this thing is oversized, that's why I was having so much trouble getting it to go through there, and that's why I ended up breaking this off. So I guess I'm going to the hardware store to see if I can find a new M8 by one tap that is the correct size. And just more and more thing to test is when I go to the store to buy one of these, I'm going to measure that sucker to see if it measures the same as this one. You know, I'm going to measure in thousands even though this is a millimeter. It measures 318 thousandths to the outside if you can see that. So, when I go to the store and buy a new one of these, I want it to measure under that by a little bit. If it measures this size or bigger, there's no point in buying it because it ain't going to work. And that is just nuts. Because like I said, this fits this perfectly. It just fits it perfectly. And this is a gauge that says M8 by 1. This tap says M8 by 1. I just, I can't, yeah, I just don't get it. I mean, that fits perfect. There's no play, no nothing. Fits perfect. Yeah. It's just not easy being me. Well, my friends, I seriously am either the most determined person on the face of the earth 
or I just am stupid and don't know when to quit. Every single thing that could possibly fight me on this has fought me on this. I mean, everything. I can't even explain it. I couldn't put it in. It would take an hour to go through every single detail that has gone the exact opposite of what I want. So why should I even keep trying? I don't know. Uh, I've spent a couple hours in town trying to find some kind of parts that would help me fix this and nothing is available. I am sure that I could order something online, but then it would be another week before I'd get it and all that kind of thing. So I am just going to give this one more shot. I, while I was in town, I bought several M8 nuts with um, one millimeter threads. I turned those nuts down to a cylinder, and so the threads are still good on the inside, but the outside is now round. I think this bit will do a press fit with those uh, nuts. It, this won't fit in my milling machine. It it's too, takes too much space, so I'm doing it here, and that's just the bottom line. Let's just see if it works. I'm having to do this more or less freehand on a drill press. That's not good ever, but we're going to give it a try. And like I said, it's everything else has fought me, so this will probably just tear the whole thing up. We'll see. That's probably the first thing that actually did pretty well. At least it appears to have gone pretty well. Uh, that drilled pretty well, so I've got a nut that I can press in here now, a round nut that I think, now it, that's assuming this didn't drill this out too big because it could, <laughs> you know. I tested this on a test piece a while ago and it looked like it would be a perfect press fit for the nut I made. Let's go in the other room and see if that's true. Well, my friends, I was going to get this, make this a little bit more complicated, I guess. But I just went and got the vise, stuck this in there, and I'm going to just lightly heat it up with this propane torch and then put it on here. It almost goes in there as it is, and then I'm going to try to tap it in with my little tiny ball peen hammer. Let's see if that works. Okay, I don't want to get it real hot. I just want to get it hot enough and then I'm going to try to place it on there with these pliers to get it started. And then I'm going to tap it in with this hammer. And that kind of looks like that worked. I don't know. I'm hoping I didn't mess up the threads, but I shouldn't be able to fix them if I did. Wow. That looks like that's pretty darn good. I gotta be honest, there's a little problem. It's not going down into the actual shaft, but uh, I don't know. It seems like it's pretty good, but it's not going into the shaft that it needs to get into, so something's not probably perfectly aligned. Pretty close, so we're getting there. Okay, we're about three fourths of the way there now. This is going to cool off to the point where that'll shrink back down around that metal. That metal's in there pretty tight. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. What I think I'm going to do is take this tap and see if it runs down through there, and then just tap it the rest of the way. Um, I'm hoping it'll go in there. We'll see. This is a new tap. Uh, it's an Irwin tap. Says it's made in the USA, so I'm assuming it's a little better tap than what I had. And it looks like it's going to cut down through and go into the chamber. I think it's working. It does look like it's worked perfectly, actually. I just hope it didn't enlarge the hole any. I don't think it did. It felt like it went in there without really cutting much. So if that's the case, then this should go all the way down into the hole. There. Yep, there it goes. Not much play, a little tiny bit of play, but very little play. And it is going all the way into the hole. Success, success, success. 
Wow. So there's what it looks like. I think what I'm going to do to play it a little bit safer is I'm going to go ahead and, and put some CA glue around that. I think it's tight enough, but I think the CA glue will seep down in there a little bit and make sure that it stays tight. Well, I got her all back together and um, I did put a little CA glue around that bushing and uh, hit it with some accelerator. Um, I put that nut back on there, put a little CA glue around that too so it won't work loose and everything works well. It uh, goes up and down just like it's supposed to and then I can lock it down with this too. So everything's, everything's back to the way it was. I do not know what caused the problem. I have no idea in fact, uh, but I know I experienced more or less the very same thing just trying to make a uh, threaded hole with that M81. I don't know what causes that. It seems to make the hole much bigger with the threads. Never experienced that before. I couldn't even tell you the number of threads I've made in my life. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. So it's not like it's my first rodeo, you know. Um, anyway, put a little oil on this because it feels a little sticky. And uh, that should help that travel better. There, you can see it really travels good. And I'll wipe off the excess oil now. And of course, the only bad thing about oil with wood is of the wood dust will stick to that. But, you know, I can always take it apart and clean it if that becomes a problem, but uh, I doubt it will. That works really well. And I'm very, very, very pleased with this. This is one of my favorite things I've ever received um, it, because it is so very useful for me. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed the quote unquote restoration of my little gift here. <laughs> It, it, this thing is awesome. I love this thing. So I did not want to be without it. And uh, you have to have both those handles working there in order to use it. So it's fixed and we'll see how long that lasts. Thank you so much for watching.